Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. My name is Mazi Chijoke Onobogo. I want to thank you, friends, for coming to what to see my video. I want to thank you so much. Um, please, uh, for those of you who haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. On on the side of it, you will see a bell icon. Click on that bell icon so that anytime I drop a video, it be on Fridays, only on Fridays, uh, it will come straight to you, direct to you. On today's video, I'm talking about the the interview uh, Mr. President had with Dr. Abati. On that video, if you go back and watch that video again, on that video, you will you will see the amount of hatred that man has for the Igbos. You can see it's written all over his face. You can see it. And when he opened up his mouth, the utterances that he was, was that was oozing out from his mouth, I mean, just smelly, talking about the open grazing bill, which is a law passed in 1960, 1969, I believe and he wants to go back and dig up the Gazette of 1963 that he is now going to allow uh, the ban on open grazing Mr. President the uh, 17 uh, governors in the southern part of the country they recently called for restructuring they also uh, announced a ban on open grazing in the southern states but despite that, the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, SCN, uh, said I mean, they didn't know what they were talking about. But uh, what exactly is your own opinion on open grace? And um, what steps are you planning to take to put an end to farmers' head as clash? You want me to contradict my, my Attorney General? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, <laughs> um, what I did was um, ask them to go and dig the Gazette of First Republic when people were obeying laws. There's cattle roots and grazing area. Cattle roots were when they are moving up country north to south or east to west, they have to go through there. If you allow your cattle to stray into any farmer's farm, you are arrested. The farmer is invited to submit his claims. The Al-Qaeda or the judge will say, oh, I pay. If you can't, the cattle is sold. And if there is any balance, you are given. And people are behaving themselves. And in the grazing areas, they built earth dumps, put uh, windy mills, in some places even veterinary departments, so that the herders are limited. Their roots is known, their grazing area is known, if they have any problem from the locality is known. But I'm telling you, this rushing to the center, you know, people just Oh, I think. So I asked for the gazettes, you know, to make sure that to, those who encroached on these cattle routes and grazing areas will be dispossessed, you know, and, uh, and try to bring some order back in, into the cattle areas. The problem is trying to understand the culture of the um, cattle areas. Um, there is a cultural distance between the chiefs and the Fulanis. So the governor of uh, Benway 
said, I am not uh, disciplining the cattle rearers because I am one of them. I cannot refuse to say I am not one of them, but, but he's been very unfair to me. And I told him that the Nigerian cattle rearer was not carrying anything more than a stick. Sometimes with a machete to cut uh, some trees and, and give it to the animal. But those sophisticated ones, they are good with AK-47. So from um, all the Sahel areas, people rush to Nigeria, you know, and uh, Fulani from Mauritania or from Central Africa look the same. So they think they, they are Nigerian ones. And uh, I assure you that we are trying to resuscitate these cattle roots, grazing areas, and make them accountable. And then this cancelling of taxes. It's ordinary people like it, but the problem of accountability, you know, when taxes are being paid, people are, are behaving themselves. But now without taxation, people are doing what they like. Well, Southeast, um, I, I was encouraged by what I had. Nobody told me. Two statements from the South South. One by um, elderly people. No, South South. South South. Yes, by elderly people. They said this time around there will be no access to sea. I'm sure you will understand what they mean. Again, the youth made the same statement. That encouraged me. So that is a It's just like a dot in a circle. If they want to exist, they would have no access to anywhere. And the way they are spread all over the country, having businesses, having property, I think Ipop doesn't know what they are talking about. Mr. President, who are you? What do you think you're doing? We can see the ignorance in you. We can see, we can tell. Are you calling, and then again, you calling the, the, the Igbos, IPOP, you calling them a dot in a circle. Mr. President, if you don't know, every Igbo man, every, every person from the East is an IPOPian. They may not belong to the family. Let me let you know this. It's indigenous people of Biafra. So anybody that's in that section, the old eastern region, is IPOP. If you don't know that, know it. What we need is referendum. Just to be to remind you again. What what why is it so hard that you know you can offer us that referendum we're asking. Because see, if if you don't offer it to us, we're going to take it by force. All we ask is for referendum, and it's going to bring a lot of things. And let me tell you, Mr. President, we are inno innovative by nature. We bring new ideas to the table. And we apply ingenuity to whatever we do, Mr. President. If you give us that referendum, that's going to give us the integrity that we need, Mr. President. It's going to dignify us, Mr. President. We're going to jubilate when you do that referendum. When you do that referendum, that referendum is going to save lives. And there will be peace in the land, Mr. President. We're going to have a renewed hope. A renewed hope. People are going to have a renewed hope with that referendum. And that referendum is going to strengthen us. That referendum is going to give us the freedom we need. That referendum at last, at last, is going to give us independence. Mr. President, give us the referendum. And all you people that's in the House of Rep from the East, I'm asking you, I'm requesting that you all keep putting down that bill for referendum. Just keep 
putting in that bill for referendum. Not only you guys in the House of Rep Senators, I'm calling upon you guys. Talk about that referendum all the time. All the time. Mr. President, please heed to the to the advice your folks gave you to let Biafra go. The women from the north, they gave you an advice to let Biafra go. The Northern Elders uh, Forum, they gave you an ad advice to let Biafra go. Not just let Biafra go, give us referendum so that we know who goes where and where they belong. Mr. President, we're asking you to give us referendum. What could be so hard about that? Just tell me, what could be so hard about giving us referendum? Mr. President, give us referendum. Referendum is the key to solving the problem that you have in Nigeria. Upon all this stuff that I listed out for you, you should consider that. Consider giving us the referendum. People in the House of Rep, Senators, please continue submitting that bill for referendum. I'm going to jump to my next topic, which is COVID. I have very good news for you guys. Good news, good news, good news. COVID is slowing down. Maybe because uh, they pumped out here in U.S., they pumped out a lot of vaccine. Everybody's got vaccine. It's slowing down. And uh, I know uh, it didn't hit Nigeria that bad. It didn't hit Africa that bad. <clears throat> but there were some cases. There were some cases. But you just please keep don't, don't take because it's slowing down. Uh, we are praying for it to go away by the end of this year. We, have, we just, you know, by this winter is going to be the test whether it's going to increase or slow down or it's going to be eradicated. Please continue to wear your mask and wash your hands regularly. Take care of yourself. So I'll go to the next topic. Hey, man. If you're over 50 years old, I want you to listen. I want you to listen. You got what is called prostrate. It's with you. And it's going to be with you. But you're going to take care of it in order for you to live long enough to see your children grow up. You're going to see your grandchildren. Possibly see your great-grandchildren. Possibly. You're going to see your great-grandchildren. And that's what I did. And I have a great-grandchild coming. Okay? So, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Nobody will do it for you. This thing called prostrate is treatable. These days, they have medications. They have minor surgeries that you can do. But you have to catch it on time. Go see your doctor. See your doctors, you know, here I see my doctor every three months. And they do a PSA test for prostate. You know, you have to know your prostate count. You have to know your prostate count. They, they do that test once a year. Once you're over 50, you need, that's something that you need to consider. You need to consider that very important if you're a man. If you're a man and you want to live this life, live long enough to see your great grandchild. You need to take care of yourself. Can nobody do it for you? Okay, now I'm going to go to everybody that's in the East. This is another topic. Everybody that's in the East. Everybody that's in Nigeria, especially. Especially the East. Take care of yourself. There's so much commotion going on. Uh, we don't come here to demoralize.
prize you. We come here to uplift you, to give you good news. We're not going to be telling you about people, this, how many people got killed, this, no, we're not into that. But you know what is going on. You know what is going on. Encourage yourself, stay out of trouble. Just stay out of trouble. Do what you need to do to survive. Because see, Biafra is coming. But you got to be alive to see it. You got to be alive to see it. Especially uh, if, you're, if you are in the teens, between 18 and maybe 40, take care of yourself because they're going around picking up uh, kidnapping and all that going on but we're not going to dwell on that because that brings people down puts fear in people we don't want to do that you know do your normal thing but be wary and take care of yourself and you know stay safe that's the main thing okay stay safe listen to Mazin Namdekano listen to him on, a, on his broadcast he will give you directives on what to do he always have been doing that telling you guys form vigilante group in your area some people sleep at night some stay awake some sleep in the daytime and stay awake at night do whatever you need to do and defend yourself defend yourself join ESN support ESN join them if you if you have to join ESN they are doing great they are doing wonders without ESN our land will be gone by now so those guys are doing a great job join them please and subscribe to Mazim Namdekano subscribe to him so anytime he comes on it will come to you just like i'm doing now okay please do that and and have i want to wish you a wonderful weekend take care of yourself and by next week we'll talk to you again take care good night